was doing my own thing. You know, it felt good to have control to do whatever I wanted. I really didn't want to listen to anybody. I just did it for popularity, and I just wanted to fit in pretty much uh, with all, everybody else. I just didn't care. Not the fact that I wanted to fit in because that was never a problem for me. It's that I didn't really get the love that I was looking for. was really good in school. I was a perfectionist, really independent. Um, always had to do everything on my own. You know, I always knew right in the back of my mind I was doing the wrong thing, but I would do it anyway. I felt like I was fitting in with people, and I just felt like I was having fun. Oh, I was hiding from my past, the things from my childhood, the way I was feeling. High school, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know where I fit in. You know, I don't really remember much of it. I, all I do is remember playing sports and just doing the drugs. I always was a very anxious person growing up, very nervous. I thought that I could manage it. I just thought that I was going to be able to keep it under control. I looked at other people, and I was like, wow, I will never be like them. I first started using drugs when I was in eighth grade. 13 years old. My freshman year in high school. 14 years old. My junior year. 11. See, around 13, I began using drugs, hanging out with the wrong crowd. It was a normal thing. Everybody drinks alcohol. I thought, well, I was just smoking one bowl of weed. And I didn't believe when they said, oh, well, weed is a gateway drug. Weed is nothing, you know, it doesn't even do anything. Well, then that led me into a cocaine addiction and then a heroin addiction. I got an escape from drugs. It was fun, and at the same time, I had nothing to worry about. Meth took a lot of my past pain away, and I just, I used it to cope. I thought, I'm never gonna smoke weed. One day I did, then I did coke, and then I did meth, and each step just led me a little bit further, ecstasy, shrooms. Methamphetamines was my drug of choice. If you know anything about meth, you know it steals everything, it steals it all. Chris shot up heroin, he was too scared to do it himself, so his friend did it for him when he was 16. I would shoot up mostly in my feet. And how many bags a day? Um, it escalated to almost five or six bags every time I shot up. He spent hundreds of dollars a day feeding his addiction. How could you get that money? I was stealing money from my parents. I was doing illegal actions with my friends. I've broken into houses. I've done that. all of the above besides selling myself. Chris is now 17 and in rehab full time at Outreach, an adolescent treatment center. He has survived heroin, but others in his community have not, and these are the loved ones they've left behind. It's easier for them to get heroin than to get a, a beer, and it's all over, and these kids are not afraid to use it. Diane and Robert's daughter Jacqueline was just 24 when she overdosed in her own bed. Susan's daughter Megan, a straight-A student, dead at 22. Dorothy's son Max was 28 and Tara's brother Paul, 19. How do you even put the pain into words? Can you? Yeah. No, there's just a hole in my heart. It, a part of my heart died the same day and you just learn to live with it. for around ten dollars or so here um, and now it's it's much more expensive and is that kind of how much you can get the heroin for now we've heard it for as low as like six dollars
What really made the treatment center different was the faculty. I mean, they really care about their patients. When I came into the doors of the treatment center, I had a sense of relief knowing that the fight to get high was over. I'm coming up on four years sober this February, and I never thought that that was possible, and I owe that to the treatment center. We now know what killed a 14-year-old girl after she attended a foam party held at Expo New Mexico. Hannah Brush died in part from overdosing on Molly. That's a pure form of ecstasy. But the just-released autopsy report shows that was not the only thing that contributed to the teen's death. Here's News 13's Amanda Goodman. Dean, according to the autopsy report, she also had high levels of Benadryl in her system, and it proved to be a deadly combination. This drug, it's to frankly put it, it's, it's garbage, it's trash, it's made with some pretty harsh ingredients. That drug, Molly, or MDMA. It's what state police say in an autopsy now confirms Hannah Brush overdosed on and died from while attending an all-ages foam party at Expo New Mexico. It happened on August 10th. The 14-year-old's friends told investigators she took three times as much of the pure form of ecstasy as them since she paid for the drug. This came from someone or someplace or something. State police are trying to find out where she got it from. It's part of their investigation into her death. These cases tend to take a while and in order to get a, a thorough investigation completed and so it could be prosecuted, a lot of work has to go into it. But according to the autopsy report, Molly wasn't the only thing she'd taken. Brush also had a very high level of diphenhydramine, the active ingredient in Benadryl. The medical examiner says the molly on its own was enough to kill her, but combining it with that much Benadryl would be especially lethal. According to state police, Brush had to have taken the Benadryl separately since it's not an ingredient used to cut molly with. But why she was taking so much of it, they don't know. 
Their focus is on tracking down who she got the molly from. When we have cases like this, the, we ultimately look for ways to solve them or an ending to, to get some closure to the victim's families and, and all who are involved in this. Brush, who was from Santa Fe, was just a week away from her 15th birthday. Dean, back to you. Amanda, thank you. According to the autopsy report, the levels of Benadryl in her system would be equivalent to popping at least seven pills. Again, it is not clear why she might have taken those.